Do you ever wonder how to use the dehydrated products that you create? Today I'm going to teach you how to make dehydrated carrot shreds and then use them in making these carrot cake muffins with cream cheese frosting and a little extra special thing on top. So let's get started. All right, let's start processing, processing through my carrots. I have um, already washed these, let them sit out for a little while and I'm going to cut off the tops and then I'm going to uh, peel. None of this is going to waste. We have the compost bin, plus we have the worm farm now that my dad's created, so the worms get everything. These are going to be these are some going to be some well-fed worms after all this is done. So let me get through this, and show you how this is going to work. Do you have to peel your carrots? You do not. If you were canning your carrots, yes, you would want to peel them. You always peel all your root vegetables for canning. But for dehydrating, there is safe and there's practical. And practical for dehydrating means that you do not necessarily have to shred these. I'm just choosing to shred them because they came from the store and they are conventionally grown and it's just the choice that I'm gonna make right now. So let's have a dehydrating BFF talk, shall we? Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about these carrots. When you do any kind of root vegetable and many other vegetables, it's recommended that you blanch first for storage because blanching stops the enzymatic process that makes food go bad on your shelf. Now going bad may mean it changes color because it's starting to lose those vitamins really quickly. And in the case of carrots, you might find that your carrots turn white and you've only had them on the shelf for two or three months and you don't understand why. If you didn't blanch them, that's probably why. But the practical side of my experience and what I've done over all these years knows that if I'm gonna use these up fairly quickly and these will probably all be used up within a month, the practical side of me knows that I'm gonna use these up faster than that process will happen. So I am choosing not to blanch my carrot today because I'm not putting most of these away for storage for long term. They're going to get used pretty quickly. But understand, if you choose not to blanch, that might happen. You're gonna lose vitamins, you're gonna lose color, and that's not what we want for storage, is it? Oh, so okay. Okay, so in order to know about how much this is going to weigh and measure, I'm going to take my scale and I'm going to put a container on there. It won't matter what container it is. Then I'm going to tear it out, which means you're just going to zero it back out because we don't want to measure the actual cup or container. And I'm going to put all of my carrots in. And that one carrot is about a cup worth of shredded carrots, a little less but definitely more than three quarters of a cup. You can adjust as you need to. There's very little that you have to be exact about. You can put another carrot in there if you wanted to. Um, it just depends on the size of carrot that you're starting with, but we're gonna go round it off to a cup that's about 70 mill milliliters. So in my journal, I'm gonna go through here and do weight before is about 70. I'm gonna, I'm gonna round up to 72 milliliters for the one cup is one carrot. And then I can also measure what it is afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying this out on my dehydrator trays. I just poured it out from my food processor uh, and get the bulk of these spread and drying. You don't have to worry about spacing on here because they're gonna dry and they're gonna shrink up a lot, but I don't wanna make this big mound of it. That makes it a little harder for all the air to circulate through. So this is a little more than I want. I'll pull some out, spread it out a little bit more. Okay, my first tray here I didn't get on camera, so I'm gonna show you. This was the cup that I had measured everything out in the beginning. So I went ahead and did this as my test. This is gonna be one cup worth of shredded carrots, 72 milliliters-ish, uh, one cup. We'll test that, we'll measure it out afterwards and weigh it to see what it weighs. And then I did about the same volume here on the second side, so we know what we've got. All right, we have all of our trays loaded. We're gonna turn on our machine. Okay, we're gonna set our temperature to about 115. My time I'm going to set up because it doesn't matter. We're going with something in the 12 hour range just to let it run and then we're going to get started. Okay, I already know that for the recipes, I need four cups of freshly shredded carrots. So what we're gonna do is one cup of dried shredded carrots. So that's two, three, four. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some water in here and let these rehydrate. I could put hot water if I wanted to. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this just like it is. They're already starting to soften up even just with that little bit of water now. What I wanna see is for these to get somewhat rehydrated. They don't have to be perfect. They're not gonna come back like fresh, so you're not gonna have the same bulk as you had with fresh, but in a time when you want some carrot muffins and you need some and you got some carrots in your pantry ready to go, this is how you could do it. I'm gonna let this sit while I go ahead and store the rest of these carrot shreds. I'm gonna powder some and then we're gonna make our recipe. Now I'm not measuring how much of this I'm gonna put into the powder. We're just gonna powder some. What I don't use today will just be put into our vegetable powder and blend it in with everything else. There we go, our fine little carrot powder. It's gonna make a bit of a mess, but I can clean it up. So at this point, for most of you, you would want to condition. That means you're gonna shake your jar once a day, every day for about five days. And what you're looking for is to make sure that nothing is clumping, nothing is sticking to the sides of the jar, uh, or any kind of moisture buildup on the inside. So after you've done that, then you can go ahead and put this away for storage. If you want to put it up just like is it, it is, that's fine. You don't need to do anything. If you want to put a moisture absorber in there, you can. You can also vacuum seal it and get it ready to go. Okay, what I've done now that we're done vacuum sealing is I put my, my uh, I marked it so I know what's in here. Even though we all know this is going to be carrots, I've got it marked so we know for sure. And yes, I put the ring on the jar even though it's been vacuum sealed. The thing is, is that your vacuum can break and then this lid just sits there. And what it's doing is introducing air and moisture into your jar. With the ring on, it, it keeps the airtight containment so that even if the vacuum breaks, it doesn't matter, you're still protected. I also want to show you a difference right here between non-blanched carrot shreds, the brand new carrot shreds. These are less than two months old and this is already what color they're getting. Can you see that? They're already starting to turn white, losing their color because they weren't blanched. They need that time because this is what happens when the enzymes start interacting with the, the vegetable and it starts taking away those vitamins. So this orange, bright orange color is not gonna last forever on your shelf. So if you wonder why yours are turning and they're still new, that's why if you didn't blanch. Now over time, when you store foods, even blanched, they may start to lose their color if they've been there for a couple of years. That's just normal in the process of, uh, of storage. And it's why we say that optimally most, most dehydrated foods done properly last about two years. You may get longer, but there you go. Okay, so we have our test carrots right here at the top. This was the extra that I did, so I'm gonna pull these off. I've already turned on my scale and I've teared it for the container that this is gonna go into. And you can tell when this is dry because it's just crinkly. There's no give in it. We're gonna, you know what? I think this is gonna take a third of a cup. Mm, go back. No, we're at a quarter. So that cup that we did originally, when we dried it, it's now a quarter of a cup. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double check myself because I'm not sure if this affected the weight when I changed out the things. So I'm gonna set this again, tear it. So we've got a zero start point, pour this in. So that scant one cup is now a scant one quarter cup, which is about 10 milliliters. So that's what we're gonna put in our book. Okay, so we're gonna pull our book in. Your note cards, wherever you keep notes, it does not matter. So we have one quarter cup and we have 10 milliliters. And that's how you'll know how much to use when you start converting recipes to know how much shredded carrots you need to use. Hi, and in case we haven't met, I'm Darcy, and I wanna be your dehydrating BFF, teaching you not only how to dehydrate food to put on your pantry shelf or your family for whatever you need it for, but also all the ways to use it. So let's get started making some yummy muffins, shall we? So we have uh, baking soda and cinnamon sugar, flour, and the recipe for this is for my friend Christy at Saving Dollars and Cents. I'll leave the link down for you in the description box so that you can get the whole recipe because I'm going to do a cheat today and not using her whole recipe, but 
there you go. Um, I'm also gonna leave a gluten-free version of this from Erin at The Humbled Homemaker in case you're gluten-free. So I'm doing that. And one of my little tricks that I do to anything that I'm making is I add either a little vegetable powder or a green powder, depending on what I'm working on. So you can hardly even see that. Then now I've got four eggs that we're gonna whisk up. And as we're blending this, we're gonna add some oil. I'm using avocado oil because I don't use vegetable oil, uh, but you can use whatever oil you typically use in whatever you're doing. So we're gonna get that going. Okay, I did this backwards. Usually for me, when I do muffins, I take the Alton Brown method. You add wet to dry, but I did the, the uh, bowls wrong. So we're gonna add dry to wet. If you heard that, that was my oven already ready for preheating. So I'm gonna add some of this and then I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Add some more. Mix it up a little bit. Add the rest of this. Now, if you're like me, I grew up on carrot cake that had nuts in it, um, but my family, half of my family does not like nuts in anything. So, oh, mess, Darcy, I cannot talk and do things at the same time. So I'm not adding nuts to this, but um, I grew up with, we put pecans in carrot cake or walnuts, but mostly pecans because we were a pecan family. Um, so we're gonna get all of this mixed in together and then we're gonna fold in our carrots. They have been rehydrating sitting here in the bowl. I did not do a specific water amount. I didn't wanna overwater them. So I went under and knew that if I needed to add more, I could, I did not need to, but we're just gonna fold these in. And if you have a, a stand mixer that you wanna do this in to make it easier, you can do whatever you need to do to make this work. Okay, you don't want to overmix your um, muffins because you don't want it to get really hard. But what I do want to do is to set this aside and let it sit and rest so that everything can hydrate, like you want the flour to hydrate and all of that. So I'm just going to let it sit there for a little while while I get my muffin tins ready. And I like popping some liners in there. And I love using dishers to put stuff into my muffin pan um, because it makes less mess for me. I can control it a little better. And it makes less mess. And I'm a messy cook, I'm a messy baker, I'm messy in the kitchen. So this helps control it somewhat. All right, we're gonna put these in the oven for about 20 minutes. Here are our cupcakes. I did fill them a little full. They got a little puffy. I'm cool with that. That's what we like. So I'm gonna let them sit here for just a few minutes and then I'm gonna transfer them to a cooling rack to cool for about 15 minutes, maybe 20 before I even start to frost, to ice them, to frost them. First, I'm gonna say sacrilege because there are times when I just need to use canned frosting. Now, if I'm doing a lot of these that we're gonna take them someplace, that's probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use something like this because it's just quick and easy. If you don't wanna use this, they're in the recipe that I said I'd link down below. Chrissy gives you how to make a cream cheese frosting from scratch. Today's not that day for me. We're going for this. But I tried the trick where you put some frosting in a bag then you get it all squeezed up, you cut off the tip and you try to do a cute little thing. It didn't work. It did work, but it's putting way too much frosting per cupcake on there. Okay, so I'm gonna go try and fix these and take off some of this excess frosting because we prefer much less frosting to cupcake ratio. Are you a I'm all about the frosting person or are you a give me just the cake? My husband is a give me just the cake. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a trick of what I'm gonna do with our orange powder. Now, could you do this when you're making up your frosting to go ahead and do this and mix it in and have orange frosting? You certainly can, but I'm also gonna just go through here with my little tea ball and sprinkle this on the top. This adds a fresh carrot flavor right to the top of your cupcakes. Oh, hey, if you want to know how to do other things with dehydrated foods, watch this video right here. Until I see you again next time, remember, nevertheless, she preserved. I'll see you again soon. Mm, so good.